So we're here with Paul Haskins from LS2 Helmets. So Paul, why don't you tell everyone why you're here this weekend? I've been invited down here. We've been helping a few of the young riders for a few years now. People like Ollie Hall, Ollie Sims, um, Clayton. There's a few that we've been helping. So I've been invited down a few times to come along. And this has been one of my first three weekends where I could actually get down here to come and see what happens at Fab Racing. So, but it looks fantastic so far. Yeah, I was about to say that. What is your first impressions of this paddock and this championship? Because obviously you help out quite a few riders here. The main thing with the paddock, I can't believe how busy it is and how many riders there are here. It's um, yeah, it's fabulous. And obviously, I, I work at the BSBs and I go to GPs and World Superbikes and everything. So it's great to see young kids like this starting off that are building up and stepping same through to these sort of things. And next step after here, I know now we have a lot of the riders at the BSB. Um, Brad Ray, for example, obviously not in our helmet, unfortunately, but you know he's come through. He's won the BSB Championship now and the World Superbike Championship lots of the riders are starting here it's just fantastic and on a normal day-to-day basis away from the paddocks what is your job at ls2 helmets i'm the sales director of ls2 for the uk so i run the uk arm of it so um as a company we've been well the parent company has been going for 33 years ls2 as a brand has been going for 16 years um we supply helmets in over 105 countries now around the world so i'm very honored to be part of that in the uk and now ls2 helmets have sponsored the mini gp70 class and now it's the ls2 helmets mini gp70 british championship so what's it been like to have that involvement with a junior series and a real stepping stone to greater things well, same as I said earlier, that, that is the point of it. We want to help these young riders, and as they progress through, hopefully hopefully they'll be wearing an LS2 helmet, and the champ- the winner of the championship this year is actually part of the prize. He will receive an LS2 helmet and sponsorship for the next year in the GP70 class, so it's a stepping stone for them, so we're just helping as much as we can. Well, Paul, it's great to see you here, and it's great for you to come along this weekend. Fantastic. I hope we can uh, catch up at another round again soon. Ollie Sims, um, I believe you're just about to head out, so just a quick one. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling this weekend? Uh, yeah, it's gone alright. Um, I had a little spill yesterday on the Mini, but other than that, it's been alright. And what's the class been like to race in this season? Because grids have massively expanded. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a better grid than last year, which is good. And is it harder to battle and is there more battles going on? What's it like on board the motorcycle? Uh, well, uh, last round, um, it was really hard to overtake as we were all so close together. And finally, any aims for this weekend here at Red Lodge? Uh, try and get my times up as much as I can, try and get a podium. Well, good luck for this weekend. We're going to wish you all the best, of course, and we hope to see some great battles on the circuit. Thank you. So now it is time, it is time for the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. It's the one everyone's been waiting for all day. It's the Premier Class here at FAB. And these are the talents of the future waiting in the holding area and waiting to go out to the track. So these riders waiting to make their way onto the circuit for what should be an incredible race ahead in qualifying. It was a fantastic qualifying to end off our qualifying for the weekend because, of course, your qualifying results here at FAB will be your starting position for all three races this weekend. You can see the pole position, man. You can see Archie O'Brien, the number 91, the Spider-Man helmet, waiting and watching until they can head out for the start of the race. Tensions built here as... It's only a nine-bike grid, but what a race we are going to see. So much talent is packed into this nine-bike field. There's not one slow rider here. We see that at Led, it was like a Moto3 race. And hopefully, just hopefully, we can see that happen all over again. There's pole sitter, Archie O'Brien. Alongside him in second position will be the number seven, Luke Fitchett. A 145.7 from Fitchett in qualifying a great lap there from him but Blake Wilson and Marco Holt will be on the second row of our grid Bill Harris and Harry Payne in 6th and 7th and Ollie Sims and Austin Johnson rounded off our grid so I don't know about you but Adam but I cannot wait for this one no absolutely me neither I'm so excited to see these these 
stars of tomorrow out here on the Red Lodge car circuit. They've been absolutely, uh, they've been getting their laps in. They've been on it absolutely all every single session. Even in the Friday, uh, even in the Friday uh, rain pour that uh, that they had, we had a little bit. Um, they were definitely out there trying to uh, uh, learn anything about this uh, circuit. Yep, they certainly were. And now the riders are trying to learn anything they can on the warm-up lap about the current track conditions because this is the big one. This is the one that everyone wants to win. This is the one that sets up the talents for the futures. We've seen the likes of Casey O'Gorman, Josh Watley, Scott Ogden battling for this title. And even Evan Belford now, they're all going on to do great and wonderful things. It's the real building blocks, the real stepping stones for your future racing career. Archie O'Brien, he looks ready. The revs rise, they pin it, and then they release it. And Luke Fitcher and Marco Holt are going to be the first two leading the way. And Luke Fitcher, though, manages to get that drive off the line. Archie O'Brien dropping all the way down to fourth position. He's still struggling with his starts on the 50 and the 70 machine. He seems to have practically mastered the 50, but still some work to do on the 70. That is clear. Bill Harris there having a battle with Ollie Sims and Harry Payne further down the order. But Luke Fitcher leading the way, leading this huge bunch of riders. Five riders in this front leading battle, this front leading group with Archie O'Brien having quite a lot of work to do and that he's only given himself that. Yeah, absolutely. No, no brilliant start. Not an ideal start there for O'Brien in the Spider-Man helmet. They make their way now in towards the final corner of this circuit. And on to the second lap. We head now down towards the main straight. The, the, the bikes zip past us and in towards turn number two there. The, uh, the, I think that was a Blake Wilson, I think, uh, trying to make a move there on... on uh, to, sorry, that was my mistake. Um, Blake Wilson. No, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, Blake Wilson in third at the moment, trying to make a move. You were correct there. But Marco Holt in second at the moment, trying to find any way past Luke Fitcher on that number seven machine. Slightly new colour scheme for Luke Fitcher this year, but still the same amount of speed. Marco Holt, second position. He's trying to find any way past, coming back from injury, and he's looking incredibly strong. No Henry McCartney, it seems, this round here at Red Lodge but still the same amount of action as now the front five turn to the front four. Who can match the pace? Who can match the pace of a 45.962 from Luke Fitcher? What a lap time that was there. Three tenths at the line. It's definitely not that now. It's definitely shorter now, but Blake Wilson on the number eight machine getting followed by Archie O'Brien, who's still after one or two laps, hasn't made any inroads on the likes of Fitcher. No, absolutely. They're still going right out of there. That's Archie O'Brien there at the back. Still trying to make a move there on the number eight rider of Blake Wilson. They're heading out in towards the S's, flip-flapping their way out towards a Simpson straight. And uh, Marco Holt there in second place, trying to make inroads on Luke Fitcher. But Fitcher is really out there. He's doing really well at the moment. He just hold that lead to about three tenths of a second ahead of the number 58. The hint to turn two, they go. And again, still trying to make moves on the inside and trying to distract their opponent. But I'm sure they'll have all eyes laser focus on the bike ahead. Yep, laser focus indeed. As Luke Fitcher, he has clear track in front of him. He has his own lines to follow, his own breaker markers to follow. And he has a raging Marco Holt behind him. Can he, can he hold the pressure? Can he hold the position? Can he hold this pace? A 45.6 is now the lead pace. That's what you need to do to stay in this league group. And you can already see Blake Wilson slightly dropping back after doing a 45.7 last time around. It's a very, very quick pace. And now we come over the start finish line. And once again, the battle's very, very close. Two tenths of a second that line this time around. The lap record around this circuit is a 43. 0.941, so still quite a little bit off, but it is overcast here today, and that is set by Wilson Doubts, the fifth place man, actually, and Wilson Doubts has set that. Of course, last year, sunny conditions we had this circuit. Not that great today, but no rain. Dry, dry running for everyone, and that's what we love to see is we get to see these great battles, these great groups, as Archie O'Brien continues to drop back with Blake Wilson. So it seems Blake Wilson is struggling to keep the pace of these front runners, and um, 
uh, it looks like our Brian's going to have to find a way past pretty soon to be able to compete for these front two yeah, positions. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I just saw Wilson. I think he made a little bit of an error there. A little bit of twitch from the bike there. And uh, Archie O'Brien is absolutely all over him. But he needs to try and get past that number eight because he's starting to now lose a bit of time there uh, behind uh, behind the number eight of, uh, of Wilson. Uh, joining back with this battle. Fitcher still holding off Holt. So... Uh, so I, I think Marco Holt will have this. He got a great launch of the start of, uh, of the grid there. Uh, but that's really earned him second place for now. But can he do anything to try and get into this lead? And we now focus on our black uh, bike of, of uh, Archie O'Brien. So um, I was looking at uh, Blake Wilson at the moment and it looks like he has some sort of issue with his gear shifter or just the way that he, the bike's getting cut into gear. And you can see it when he's downshifting especially. He has to keep the bike almost upright, it seems. And it's mainly the back section circuit he's doing it. Um, as we wa uh, we'll watch him do it, he's done almost every single lap. Um, so I don't think it was a mistake there from him. I think there's either a slight mechanical or a slight niggling issue that he needs to get around and ride around as they come down the back straight now we watch Blake Wilson and we wait to see um, him set up the bike ever so slightly just in the second half of this corner he comes round and then once he back shifts here he has to properly set up the bike to be able to get that bike clicked into gear and get that bike clicked down the gear compared to all the other riders so he's potentially losing some time there yeah, so that's really unfortunate there. Uh, so that will, that will be causing him a, a good couple of seconds uh, throughout each. That's five laps left remaining. Archie O'Brien now sets the fastest lap in that number 91. So they're all now starting to bunch up. So I think that might be because maybe it may have something to do with these leaders at the moment with the Fitcher and Holt. Holt still on the back of Fitcher. So he might be just trying to, to pressurize him into a mistake. Keep Fitchett looking behind him, not laser on, laser scanned on the road ahead of him. The hold there, maybe try a different line here. Looking to the outside, but not quite poking that tyre inside just yet. I think he's going to save that for a couple of laps later. Look, Fitcher making his way towards the final chicane. Powering now out onto the out of the corner, and I think Holt, Holt's looking now to try and get past once again. We now switch to uh, Harry Payne and uh, Austin Johnson. This is the battle for eighth place, I believe. Yeah, so at the moment, having the battle further down the order there. Um, but now we await to see what's going to happen at the front. What's going to happen with this lead group? Four laps to go in this race. Luke Fetcher leading the way on the number seven machine. Marco Holt just behind. Blake Wilson slightly further behind. But it seems every single lap, they're doing about the same lap times. If one of the riders does a 45.1, all of them do a 45.1. If one, if the front boy, Luke Fitchett, does a 45.4, 45.3, everyone else does that sort of time. So it seems that no one's really able to get the upper hand um, in this later stage of the race. Four laps to go in, in this, of this race to come to the line to make it 43 laps to go as Luke Fitchett, 45.088, and everyone else doing 45.1s or 45.2s. So... Now, is this Luke Fitchett's chance? Has he been holding something in the locker to now show what he can do? What can Mark Holt do? Can he match it? Well, absolutely. He looks like he has been holding on. But I think that's a mistake there from Fitchett. And through goes Holt. Holt now leads the way here at uh, Red Lodge Circuit. And they make their way now in towards the S's. I'm pretty sure Fitchett will be absolutely kicking himself. And I think that might have been a little mistake there. I think you may have gone, maybe gone a bit wide there. Oh, oh he's Luke off, he's Fitcher. off, he's off. Oh, Luke there's Fitcher another one. And, yeah, Archie O'Brien off in the exact same style coming out of that final corner. Oh, oh there's another one. And, um, yeah, there's something down at that final corner there. So red flag. Someone's red calling flag's red flag. got to come out there. Three riders down oh, oil oh, on oh, the circuit oh, or some kind of substance on the circuit causing riders to lose the rear coming out of that final turn. So There might be no oil. Yeah, someone's fuming. So uh, four bikes down there at that final corner. A massive, massive crash there. And we await for the red flags to come out of this circuit. Red flags are out now at the Marshall Post. So the riders will make their way into the pit lane. Luke Fitchett, Wilson Delks, Harry Payne and Archie O'Brien all down at the final corner. And luckily it looks like um, everyone is up on their feet 
at the moment. Look, Fitchett there up on his feet. Everyone's wondering what's happening there. There's Danny Kent. Uh, Danny Webb, sorry, walking over there, checking on the riders. Look at Alan as well, checking on everyone, see what's happened. The riders discussing what happened there because something had to be on the circuit for everyone to lose the rear like that. Holly Harris doing a great job as well, pushing Archie O'Brien's bike off the circuit there. But terrible incident there, not what you want to see. Yeah, absolutely not. That was uh, very much came as a surprise. There might have been a, maybe a bit of oil or something on the, the circuit because there's no way that those all four riders can go off like that. That's, that doesn't happen normally. Yeah. That's That's got to be like a, a few... Uh, I'm not sure of oil or leakage or yeah it had to be something on the circuit you could just see the way that they lost the rear um yeah whenever you crash whenever you crash a bike on a substance um it's literally like riding on ice which um which we're about to see now as we see a replay of this incident at this final corner it was mark holt look fitch in the way mark holt managed to escape it but look fitch it's like riding on ice and then archie o'brien falling him through and you can just wait and see wilson doubts will appear in as even the oh. marshals holly harris being very very lucky there um, but Wilson does try to pick up his bike trying to tell Rice to slow down but it's like as Harry Payne also losing the rear there as well so telling everyone to slow down and get this race stopped because something was on the circuit and now we um, see some discussions anyway happening at its final corner to see exactly what's went on so, uh, yeah, very, that's a very, very scary accident. That's not something you want to be seeing, especially with the way the marshals already came towards the two stricken bikes and then the two other ones of, uh, I believe, uh, Harry Payne and uh, Wilson Dilk following in. Uh, you, you just don't want to see that on a, on a race circuit. So uh, I think uh, we're, we're finishing off for the day. Luke Fitcher is your winner ahead of uh, Marco Holt. L uh, Blake Wilson will be on the podium. He's currently in P3 with Archie O'Brien in P4. Wilson dealt P5. We had a Bill Harris, Harry Payne, Ollie Sims and Austin Johnson rounds out the nine riders. So coming up now is race two of the Premier Class here at Fab Racing. It's the big one. It is the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. It's a very, very talented field that we have here at Fab. Drama to say the least in race one. It was the final race of Saturday's running and wow, it delivered. Oh, it absolutely did. We saw that. Uh, we saw so many battles. Of course, Marco Hull going for the lead there and of course the, uh, the suspicious substance on the uh, on the on the circuit causing a four bike pile up so uh, of course we'll be uh, going through the grid in just a moment they all line up on the uh, the front row you see there in the spider-man helmet archie o'brien on a pole position and he will be joined by the number seven of luke fitchett so that is your front row of the grid so we now get ready for the formation lap. The revs are going to be rising there. You see Archie O'Brien launching off the grid and we'll be going through the grid formation with you just for just, just a moment. So he's very excited for this race. It's going to be absolutely incredible seeing all these riders. So there you go. Archie O'Brien will be on pole position with a 45.5 and then Luke Fitcher will be alongside him. Blake Wilson will be lining up on the second row of the grid in third place with Marco Hall who took the lead but can he replicate that today? Wilson Dilk will be in fifth ahead of Bill Harris on the third row of the grid. Harry Payne will be in seventh with Ollie Sims and, and uh, Austin Johnson will be lining up in P9. So uh, I don't think uh, Wilson Dilks will be uh, participating. I'm not entirely um, sure. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and find out. But um, a hefty crash at the end of race one. Um, I believe it was either water or coolant on the final corner causing four riders to crash on the um, the, oh, the final corner and it caused Red Flag to race. Holly Harris, um, one of the marshals that ran out um, to try help them. She's injured. She's on crutches at the moment. And Wilson Delt, I believe, has a broken wrist. Marco's dad, Marco Holt's dad was telling me this morning. 
but we'll go racing for race two. If they look to the lights, the revs will rise, and we go racing, and wow, what a start there. Look, Fitcher getting the race lead, but there's Blake Wilson into turn one. Blake Wilson is here, and he's showing his form. Archie O'Brien in third position at the moment, but Marco Holt getting pushed down to fourth place. Harry Payne making his way up to fifth, but Blake Wilson, the number eight. Wow, that was unexpected there. What a launch that was from him. Bill Harris, he had a massive wheelie off the line there. Shake up the head. He was not happy with that one at all. The revs, and he let go of the clutch slightly too early, but the revs were slightly too high for that one. But Blake Wilson leading the way. We've seen it yesterday. He looked strong. He could match the pace for quite a while. He was struggling slight, ever so slightly in the ra late race pace. But we're going to wait and see. It's been a whole night of thinking. It's been a whole night of wondering how you can improve. And now this is where we see who can improve as Austin Johnson makes his way past Harry Payne further down in the field. But at the line, two tenths of a second separated Wilson from Fitchett, from O'Brien, from Holt. Oh, fantastic start there from Blake Wilson. He really made the uh, he's, uh, really made the start that he needed. Now it's going to be so crucial for this race lead. He will need to be in that position to have any chance of lead, of winning this race. But he's got some fast riders in behind him. You can see that the uh, the number seven of Fitch here, the uh, Spider-Man helmet of RG O'Brien. These guys are going to be going right at it. And of course, our leader got before the red flag in race one, Marco Holt, is even at the back of this train. So these are the four main protagonists of this race. It seems like they now head towards turn one. And that's a, a Marco Holt trying to overtake Archie O'Brien. But he's just going to back off in the early stage of this race. No risk to, to be taken in the early stage. We now follow back with our leader. And, and Blake Wilson continue to lead this race ahead of Luke Fitcher. And I'm just wondering if Fitcher can do anything about this. And the moment, and that's a wide moment there from O'Brien. He's allowed the, ninth, the 58 of Marco Holt to go through. So Holt up to the third place now. He will complete the podium places. And RG O'Brien, once again, another mistake from O'Brien. He'll be kicking himself once again. He'll be hoping to try and uh, try and lessen the mistakes for race three because that's going to be crucial if he wants to get a win in this class. Yeah, but he's going to want to take the race win, but so is Blake Wilson. Ten laps to go. He is hungry for it. There was a lot of drama in round one and two of Blake Wilson. There was some contact made. He was put off into the gravel at the final corner, and he was absolutely livid, to say the least. And now he's back for vengeance. He's back to take the race win in his eyes. He leads by just one-tenth of a second at the line. The fastest lap of the race will go to Mark Holt at the moment for 44.9. That's slightly off the lap record, around half a second. But look, Fitcher still in second place at at the moment, look, Fitcher, he's great at defending, and now he's gonna have to find someone. This track's so tight, it's so twisty, but look, Fitcher, he's trying to make it work, going into the final corner. Can he make it work? Yes, he does, he makes it stick. The number seven leading from the number eight, and the 58 just behind the marker hole at the back of this week three. So, this is gonna be absolute fireworks in the final nine laps. Oh, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. And again, like you said, we've uh, now got eight laps remaining of this race and it's still going off between our leading trio of Fitcher, Wilson and Holt. Fitcher now leading this race. Holt all over the back of Wilson, really putting that eight under pressure as Holt now looking towards this uh, outside, maybe trying different lines. And we've seen a lot of riders today uh, doing as they switch back now down the Simpsons straight and heading towards this final chicane. Do you see there, Fitcher getting a little bit of a lead there. So that's going to be a bit crucial and you'll need these two to battle. You see that uh, green and purple helmet of uh, Marco Hall trying everything and then the lime green run, uh rims of uh, Blake Wilson just uh, trying to be the cork in the bottle between uh, between these, th these uh, two. So Holt, uh, sorry, Fitchett now leading this race but again Holt having to try and do anything at this rate. Yeah, we're going to have to see what's going to happen because Holt, he looks like he's desperate for a way pass and I understand why because last time around Blake Wilson, he was about three tenths away from Fitcher's pace, but they've definitely caught up this lap, so it's going to be interesting to see what the lap time is going to be like, but is Marco Holt trying to replicate something here like what Fitcher did to Blake Wilson? I'm sure Blake Wilson will be trying to defend onto the Simpson straight the best he can after that move was made on him. That's how you learn here in the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 class. These are the talents of the future, and you can see why they're so quick, they're fast, they're furious, and Marco Holt is 
wanted to find any way through. He's going to have to make it fit. He's going to have to get a better drive somewhere and get alongside him. He's been doing a lot of running in Spain this year. He was just at Spain last weekend. He picked up a podium place as well out there. He's been very, very impressive as there, Blake Wilson, doing what he was doing yesterday, setting up that bike a lot more midway for the corner to get the bike back shift compared to all the other riders. But Marco Holt, he's desperate for a move and he's clearly wanting to battle for that race win. Oh, he definitely seems in the mood to try and get this move done. But Marco Holt in there behind there. He wants to try and overtake Wilson as much as he can, trying a different line here. Wilson wants to go on the inside there, try and distract Fitcher, but it's just left him in the clutches of Holt here. So there's still remaining three aligned here with Fitcher ahead of Wilson, ahead of Holt, but there's still such minimal margins between these three riders. They all uh, dive in there and lean into a Warren uh, in unison, but it's going to be the seven ahead of the eight, ahead of the 58. Yep. Five laps remain in this race, and now it's going to be something special. I can guarantee you the three podium positions you are watching right in front of you. Three different lines were made as Marco Holt makes the move for second position. The 58 alongside, but Blake Wilson, he's looking for any way past. He looks fired up now, does Blake Wilson. He knows that this is not over just yet. He almost hits into the back of Marco Holt there into turn two. The two lines merge into one very, very quickly into there. You seem to release the brake and on you go, but look how quick Marco Holt has managed to catch up to Luke Fitchett there. Luke Fitchett right um, closed in now. He's going to be right under a lot of pressure at the line last time around. The gap between Holt and Fitchett was almost seven tenths of a second. Now it is absolutely nothing. It's not even half a bike climb. So now they head onto the Simpson straight. Uh, four laps remain in the number seven from the 58 as now Blake Wilson begins to lose touch. Yeah, so fantastic battle there. And Holt has managed to get past Fitch. It's going to be really crucial. He's having a look there. You see the bike moving everywhere. It seems so active uh, through that turn one before French Kerr. Uh, they uh, begin to pile on the brake pressure. But through 180 we go. And Fitch feeling the pressure there. Is he feeling it in uh, the rear, in his nerves? I wonder how those uh, nerves are actually feeling. In the, in the veins of Luke Fitcher. They're heading now down the wall. Straight in there goes Marco Holt. Having a look to the inside. He did that in race one, but it's not come off yet. But uh, still three laps to go with this race. It's Fitcher versus Holt. Yep, Fitcher versus Holt here at Red Lodge. Who's going to win? It's going to be a duel to the line. That is for sure. But look at that. No gap between them. Three laps to go in this race. About to make it two. Um, and now heading into turn two. Into Senna. The number seven leading the way. Holt, though, it looks like his best options after the straight run. There's Ollie Sims having the battle with Harry Payne further down in the field at the moment. But now they're going to power it through on to the straight run, out of the Warren, into the long, long left-hander. Before we go into the S's, we've seen Holt trying something last lap. He's trying something new this lap, a slightly wider line there for him, trying to get the drive onto the Simpson straight. Yeah, so fantastic. You see there, a few uh, line changes there. Uh, just trying different lines as we've been seeing all throughout this weekend. Luke Fitcher through the final corner. They'll zip their way over the start-finish line to start the final lap of this race. This is going to heat up in the final few corners here at Red Lodge. Final couple of corners left. The final mile of race, and Ollie Sims finds a way through on Harry Payne. So Harry Payne, slight mistake there from him. But all eyes are on the race leader. It's Luke Fitcher still leading the way from Holt. Holt building up. Holt's building the attack. We've seen him trying to make a move. He tried it once again on the final lap. It's not worked now, though. So Holt, he's going to have to find something special. He's going to have to get a perfect drive out of the S's onto the Simpson straight. Now we head round to the Simpson straight. It's going to be a last corner move. Or will it be a drag race to the line? It's going to be a drag race to the line. Luke Fitcher leading the way from Holt. And Holt is not going to get out. Luke Fitcher. Fitcher wins the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 race from Mark Holt. One tenth of a second at the line. Blake Wilson comes home in third. And Archie O'Brien, he didn't manage to have the race pace in that race. He comes home in fourth place. Austin Johnson will cross the line in just a second time to take that fifth from Finley Paul Hill. And Bill Harris in seventh. And Ollie Sims should beat Harry Payne for that eighth position. But wow, 
what a duel we had. Yeah, incredible. You saw, just saw there, Luke Fitch was absolutely delighted with himself taking his fifth win of the season in this class. He's really proving to be the star of the uh, of the Mini GP70 class. Marco Holt managed to make that overtake on uh, on on uh, Blake Wilson, but uh, he will only be good enough for second. He, and, uh, of course, Wilson will be competing the podium. We move into the top ten. There you go. Luke Fitcher is your winner by a tenth of a second, and uh, Holt and Wilson joining him on the podium. Uh, Archie O'Brien in P4, head of Austin Johnson. Finley Paul Hill uh, will finish in sixth with with Bill Harris and Ollie Sims in eighth with uh, with Harry Payne. And uh, what a finish here for the LS2 Helmets uh, MK Mini BGP uh, British Championship. It's the final race of the weekend. It's the final time that we'll see the big one. It's the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship Race 3. A lot, is, a lot of build-up has went on towards this race. The riders, some of the riders, are in the pit lane in the holding area and are looking focused at the moment. We've had some great racing so far in this class. A lot, a lot of drama. There was a big crash in the race one at the end of Saturday's action. There was some water or some coolant that dropped out one of the machines causing the likes of Luke Fitchett um, Wilson dealt to crash out the race. Archie O'Brien also another one of the victims to that fall. Harry Payne fallen as well. So a lot of drama, a lot of action. But within all that drama, there's been some awesome racing with some great talents. Oh, it's been absolutely amazing watching the stars tomorrow making their way out onto the grid and doing battle around the Red Lodge uh, circuit. And it's been honestly an absolute experience to, to see these guys in action and seeing what uh, the future holds for such a young riders. These guys... Uh, are still so young and they want to get on the international stage as much as possible hoping to make it to Spain or or making their way into onto the international stage but I'm sure we'll be seeing them very very soon on the big stages yeah I'm sure we will and so far this weekend it's been Archie O'Brien who has been starting on pole position after setting a 45.509 in qualifying Luke Fitcher is alongside him on the front row of the grid Blake Wilson will start the race from third of Mark Holt alongside him in the second row of our grid of Wilson Delks trying to make a comeback will he start his race let's find out in the fifth place of Bill Harris alongside him after setting a 47.219 Harry Payne will begin the race from seventh possession with Ollie Sims and Austin Johnson rounding out our front row so it's time for the final race of the weekend. Oh, it's going to be absolutely all guns blazing. And I'm so looking forward to the final race. It's been an absolute pleasure to be commentating over all the action. Myself and Lewis have really enjoyed ourselves. But uh, yeah, we move on to the final race of the, of, the, of the evening. And what a way to finish it off. What a way to finish it off. The revs will build very soon. The tension has already begun. You can see Arch O'Brien warming up his bike to say he's definitely making sure it's ready to race. He's revving it flat out. They are going to put it all on the line. It is the big one and now the lights are on. The lights are off and we go racing. It's Arch O'Brien who struggles at the start once again. Luke Fitcher takes the race lead. Mark Holt hanging it out to dry on the outside through turn one while Blake Wilson slips up the inside of Archie O'Brien slipping them down to fourth position Harry Payne having a good start as well in fifth place at the moment but at the front Luke Fitch at the number seven begins to lead the way in this race Mark Holt what can he do he's been so dominant in the 50 class this weekend can he get this race one in the 70 we're going to have to wait and find out the 58 machine a wider line and it looks like he's held up mid corner there from Luke Fitcher. What's the run going to be like on the Simpson Street? Will he try and make a move into the final corner or will he wait until turn one, the French curve? Let's find out. It's going to be a run to the line. Who's going to get the better drive? Who's going to have more speed on the start-finish straight? Archer Bryan still in that fourth place as now we head into Senna. 
Oh, some brilliant start there from Luke Fitch. He's managed to get the launch that he needed. And on the way through the, the snaking section, he will be joined by Marco Holt. Holt just in behind there with Blake Wilson just uh, following up. Archie O'Brien there is uh, starting to just fall out back a bit. But I'm sure with the batting going on at the front of the field, which you've been seeing all weekend long, I'm sure he'll be getting in the battle. It's just very, very soon. Marco Holt trying the outside there, but uh, he's just going to go and switch it back. And now just try and get the run here. He'll be analysing what Fitchett does. What is he What is he not good at? And what will be his advantages? And he'll be looking at that and trying to suss it all out or as, we, as we make our way through the race. Yep, 10 laps remain in the race at the moment, though. So look, Fitchett, plenty of time to hold back maybe something special for the final couple of laps. Blake Wilson, the fastest lap of the race, a 45.127. He's sitting there in third place, slightly behind these two riders at the moment. So look, Fitchett, the number seven machine, still leading the way from Mark Holt. Mark Holt, though, he's looking very, very aggressive. We've seen that a couple of times in race two. He just tries to show his front nose there um, on the end to the long left hand he backs out of it though every single time it's quite a tricky place you almost need Luke Fitcher to set up for any hope of a move through there but now on to the start finish straight now and to make it nine laps to go this weekend of farm racing it's been a great round three so far and let's end it on the high with this superb battle forming for the race lead three bikes in one um, group oh it's been absolutely fantastic watching uh, Marco Holt now setting the fastest lap but guess what the top three have have all done a 45-0. This is the pace they're dealing with. Every single etch matters. So if one make one makes a mistake, then they're all gonna then he's gonna go. Oh, that's a massive accident. There's two uh, bikes involved there. They need to pick those up immediately. And that's a 27, yeah, I believe. Yeah, that's Austin Johnson and Finley Paul Hill crashing out of the race. There, Finley Paul Hill taking a bit longer to get remounted on that motorcycle on that 199 machine. But there's Mark Holt. He's trying a different line every single corner compared to the man in front of him and that is how you that's your only chance around the circuit to try and make some time and to try and get a better drive on to the next corner because it seems to be in this infield section corner after corner after corner and it's real one side of the tire to the other so it's almost impossible to make a move without your rival making the mistake yeah we've been hearing that the rider saying it's at you you don't have a time to take a breath on this on, on this circuit you don't have time to take a break you're into the next corner and into the next you're only you only breaks really is the, uh, the the straight run which we've just been down but it's still Luke Fitcher out uh, on the top here ahead of Marco Hall but in towards the next sequence of corner which is the final corner they'll power their way down towards turn number one and Marco Holt straight on the brakes here trying to get anything and once again we've seen the different lines off-putting riders and this is the, what, the way to be overtaken and I uh, just wonder if Fitcher is going to fulfil of that uh, under the pressure of Marco Holt. Fitchett setting his personal best lap of the race of 44.971 last time around. And now we await to see what can happen. The fast lap of the race still held by the second place man, Marco Holt. He looks fast, faster through this section of the circuit. But Fitchett, he's so good at defending. He knows exactly where to put the bike. He knows exactly how not to let Marco Holt pass. This is not the first time these guys have went toe to toe during a race. So they know how each other race. They know that they are pretty respectful but Mark Holt, I just seen his eyes there. He looks so determined. He looks like there's only one thing on his mind, and that is a clear track in front of him. So that, the only way to do that is get past the number seven, which is easier said than done. But Blake Wilson, I've just seen on our timing screens, 44.9, he's the first one to dip into the 44th. So maybe Blake Wilson is just saving something to then go on a late attack with six laps to go of this race. Fitcher just having a look here and uh, trying to, to fend off uh, from Marco Holt. He's keeping a clear head for now, but that can very easily be lost in the last few laps. There goes Holt having a look on the inside, but that'll turn onto the outside. So you're just going to back off for now. They power through and zip past our cameras towards turn number one on French Cup having a look around the outside of Senna and Marco Holt trying that uh, oh he's oh, been cut off there so I'm uh, just having a look and see what, if, uh, what was the outcome of that one and it's that uh, Marco Holt has had the door shut on him shut on him indeed and no way through still with 
five laps remaining in this race. Mark Holt is looking this way, he's looking that way, but no way through of Fitcher so far. It's the final race of the weekend. He's gonna want to win it. He's gonna want to find something special, invent something creative, something which we haven't seen all weekend. Can we see an incredible pass? I think we will. I think this is gonna turn into a titanic battle as we head into the closing stages of the race. Now, four laps remaining. Another personal best, though, from Luke Fitchett. Is Hope potentially getting held up and frustrated at the moment? Oh, some fantastic lines there being taken by Holt. He's just trying to uh, to make his way uh, past, but he's going to take his time, I think, with the uh, with, in the white uh, bike. Fitchett is still currently out in the lead of the race at the moment, but uh, still time left in uh, for, the, for Holt to try and get past. Again, having a look at that outside line, and then flick their way into the next corner. But round eight, seeing the S's and down the Simpson straight, we go for the next corner of the uh, the paddock paddock curve. Fitch is still leading this the race, and it's going to get so so close. We move on to three laps remaining of this race. Three laps remaining in this race, and Luke Fitch at Mark Holt still going wheel to wheel at the moment. Luke Fitch at one of the cleanest racers in the paddock. He knows exactly how to defend and he knows how to get what he wants. And right now, that is a race win. But Mark Holt as well, he's so cool, calm, and collected, and he doesn't make any silly passes. But the 58 of Mark Holt, he's looking this way, he's looking that way, he's looking around the outside at the moment, sets up the bike, shifts it down one gear, and then powers it through the S's and powers it towards the Simpson straight tries to get the drive onto it he's trying to push everything out of that 70cc machine but what's it going to be with just a couple of laps to go oh it's been absolutely fantastic it's really heating up here but time is running out for hold I'm pretty sure that's going to be something uh, some uh, oh, some intense moments in here he's going to uh, really he might start to doubt himself even hold as he makes his way now into 180 he's probably going to try and be a little bit more aggressive try something uh, Bit, uh, bit erratic, but uh, but it's all about staying calm. And I think that was a mistake there. Sticking in the suit is Holt, but uh, no way through here. He's going to try the outside line, and can Holt go around the outside? He's going to switch it now and try and get the best run down Simpson Street. But I don't think he's going to do it on this lap. It doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem possible. But then now side by side, uh, but uh, Fitcher defending that inside line. He knows exactly what he's doing, making some great defensive maneuvers. Yeah, great defensive maneuvers. The final lap of the weekend for Fab Race in round three. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Fitcher? Is it going to be Marco Holt? Now Finley Paul Hill is coming into play, but now he gets out of the way. Sensible there from Finley Paul Hill. It's a last lap battle. He does not want to be involved. He does not want to be at blame for anything that goes on here. Marco Holt trying to build speed, trying to build the confidence in this final lap. Is it going to be winner or Bennett? Let's find out. Half a lap remaining. Down the Simpson straight, they will go. The power out through the essays. It's Fritchett versus Holt. We've said it once, we'll say it again. Who will it be? Mark Holt trying to drag race to the line, trying to power out through. Luke Fritchett takes the race, winning the final race of the weekend for the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. What a battle that was there. It was a classic battle between the two. We've seen it once, we'll see it again. Mark Holt of the little look at the right hand side of his motorcycle 44.833 on the final lap there from Mark Holt the fastest lap of the race Blake Wilson two seconds behind the two fist shake a handshake whatever that was between <laughs> the two of them but they're both pretty happy with that they're both um, they'll both be saying that was a great race and they would have both enjoyed that no matter what position they came in I'm sure Holt would have preferred to win the race but he still would have loved that to have a good battle with his mate oh absolutely that was absolutely entertainment on the limb is how we get here at Fab Racing you'll be seeing this every single time so it's so worth tuning in to every single round of this season and I'm sure I'm sure I'm going to hope that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of new people that have joined today will be joining next time out yep next time out but these guys a great race there from 
our premier class here at Fab the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. It was Luke Fitchett who won by one tenth of a second from Mark Holt in second place. And Mark Holt, fastest lap of the race. And Blake Wilson came home and rounded out our podium on the number eight machine with Archie O'Brien having a consistent ride in fourth place. He stayed in fourth place for the whole race and Bill Harris came home in the top five a good ride there from him constantly improving on the mini GP70 trying to improve in the footsteps of his older brother Ronnie Harris but Ollie Sims came home in sixth position a busy weekend from him also racing in the LC40 elite class with Harry Payne in seventh and Finley Paul Hill after that incident earlier on with Austin Johnson in eighth place but what an amazing race and what an amazing round we've had here for round three slightly less hectic for the riders after a double header at Lid last time out but a great weekend of racing the weather has been on our side for the second day of running